Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Michael, and here's what he has to say. Howdy Sandman, I'm sure you've already thought about this before and will have some answers for me. What about dating overweight women and leveraging their lower sexual marketplace values to keep them from running away? This has worked for a couple of guys I know and they are somewhat happily married right now. Is this the best way to cheat the system and keep a woman from branching off to other guys and leaving you? Tell me Sandman, does this sound like it's going to work and where are the drawbacks? Well Michael, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. The thing about dating overweight women is that it works depending on how many things and including your race, financial background, tolerance for bullshit, and what you're actually willing to accept. From my own experiences, there's a reason why a fat woman hasn't been scooped up by someone else before you. Either she's been riding around on the cock carousel and her pig-like body hasn't been able to get a man to commit, or there's something wrong with her personality. Even if somehow you're able to successfully game the sexual marketplace game and catch a whale, if you have kids with her and she gets diabetes and the doctor has to hack off her feet because you've been eating too many french fries and ringolos, what do you tell those kids? It wasn't her fault, it was just her glands that made her swell up like a hot air balloon. And cutting her feet off was a way to let off some steam. Also, having sex with a fat woman is like having sex with a sofa, except that's not loose change between the crevices, but instead it's STDs and cooch critters. Besides the obvious hygiene, laziness, sweat, and health issues that overweight women have, they also have horrible self-esteem issues lurking below the surface. All of those issues keep them in check from leaving you, but at the same time, they don't prevent them from looking to swing away. One overweight woman I was with would occasionally get hit on by black men right there in front of me, and I had no clue. She would be extra nice to them, and while she was sizing them up, they would basically disappoint her, and she would then stick it out with me. If you're a white male with an overweight woman, it's easier to hold on to her. I'm not trying to be racist or trying to be controversial, but overweight white women see white men as higher status, and this is their prejudice and not mine. From what I've seen, many overweight or obese white women get together with black men because black men appreciate their ample derrieres. And they're also more confident that such men will actually give them a commitment, and so they can turn him into a good little plow horse to haul a regal rear end around town. With regards to fat women being needy, you need to watch the first video in the description called What Men Love and Hate About Dating Fat Girls by a woman called Sarah Vargas, and she has 600,000 followers on YouTube. In this video, she talks about the body types that the guy she dates like and the reason for them dating her. And the reason I believe she's doing this is to see how much she can get away with and how much she can abuse them because she's trying to gauge just how much they love her and how deeply they're willing to fall for her. Women either fat or skinny need to sniff out how much of a spell they have you under using their sexuality and body. Because quite honestly, what else do they actually have besides that? Michael, if you're willing to date a fat or thick woman and fall in love with her, then she will eventually figure out that you're committed and you aren't going anywhere. That's when she's going to leave the audition or honeymoon phase in the relationship and start treating you poorly and taking advantage of you emotionally, financially, or just about any other way. Women understand that men are attracted to different things on different women, so if they figure out that you're crazy for cankles, they will leverage that for a coach purse. She's going to ask you what you like about her eventually, and if she figures out that you like fat women, then she's going to have a license to eat like a hippopotamus and blimp up like the Michelin Man. If you're going to date the fatties, then don't tell them that you're into that, and just don't answer them when they ask you some questions. If a fat woman you're attracted to asks you if her dress size makes her look fat, then don't say yes or no, but instead kiss her with oversized passion, and then you'll basically have passed her shit test. Your actions say that you desire her, and that will make her feel like she has you under her spell. If, on the other hand, you tell her to work out or call her Miss Piggy, you'll be put under control because her self-esteem will basically be shot. Putting her in her place is the best way to control her and make her feel like she's beneath you. Women have always been beneath men, and if they're actually above us, then they won't actually fully like it because it means that the man isn't all that capable of providing and protecting for her. Sarah, the girl in the video, also says that many guys don't date bigger girls because they have self-esteem issues. But as far as I'm concerned, a woman with self-esteem issues feels bad about herself, so she doesn't have the energy to feel bad about you. A woman that loves herself and has lots of self-esteem is usually narcissistic and a disaster waiting to happen. Both myself and Turd Flinging Monkey tried this strategy of dating overweight women and it didn't work and it was a complete failure. I also met a few men that married larger ladies that kept getting bigger and bigger and eventually they just stayed home getting larger and larger while their husbands continued to go out and work and make money. Both ladies became hoarders and piled on the responsibilities onto their husbands. Sure, dating a fat chick might be a fun thing to do when you're young and nobody is watching. But once they hit their early to mid-30s, they age quicker than the thin women. Their health issues multiply and some men can't even retire because they're working to support their wife's blood pressure, heart disease, as well as diabetes medications once these women hit their 30s. The health thing is a major drawback for a long-term relationship. 
In Sarah's video, she actually starts crying crocodile tears, not because she's strong, but because of her low self-esteem and because she really can't have a guy that she wants. In the past, women had missing teeth, no makeup, were constantly pregnant with their droopy breasts, and they were stuck in marriages because that was life. Women that were skinny or not were having self-esteem issues, and that was pretty much normal. Women shouldn't feel good about themselves because of their bodies, because the moment they actually do, they generally treat men like shit. The second video in the description is called Benefits of Dating Fat Chicks, and Trisha, the woman in the video, is overweight and has 2.5 million subscribers on her channel. She says that fat women know how to cook all types of food. But that's a lie because just because a woman can eat more than a healthy woman doesn't have anything to do with her cooking skills. If she knew how to cook, she would be eating more healthy, home-cooked meals instead of fast food. Trisha's right about one thing. Fat women never ask you if they look fat, and the reason I think that happens is because they know they're fat, and having someone possibly bring it up will obviously just attack their self-esteem. She's too busy fighting herself to fight you. Another benefit she talks about is how designers don't make clothing for fat women, so they won't spend as much money on clothing. This I found to be true because a woman that's fat has a hard time finding things that fit her properly. But I think that's changed recently because I see overweight women wearing all kinds of god-awful patterned clothing to hide the fact that they're fat, and unfortunately all it does is draw more attention to them. Trisha also shames male viewers and says that they should step up and be a man and ask a fat chick out. If there were really as many benefits as she says, then she wouldn't actually need to shame men into asking fat women out in the first place. It might have been true in the past that large women had self-esteem issues, but the body positivity movement is creating an army of Michelin man-sized women out there that are just as bitchy and nasty as many skinny women. Trisha gets it right by saying that fat women are happier, and she says the reason for that is because she can eat anything that she wants. But I beg to differ. The reason I believe fat women are happier is because they have to compensate with their behavior for their terrible self-esteem issues in many cases. So besides having low self-esteem and less likely to monkey branch to another man, fat chicks don't really actually offer you much in the way of benefits. And besides, the fat acceptance movement will destroy those advantages as well. So in the end, you're dating a woman just like any other except she's going to have more health problems in the future and she's probably much lazier than her skinny counterparts. The fat acceptance movement is an attempt by women to socially condition men to accept them as overweight so they don't have terrible self-esteem issues to boot. But unfortunately, they will still have them so long as other women remain skinny and pretty or both. That's why they're trying to thin shame the skinny chicks because they see that if all women were fat out there, then men would have no choice but to accept them and they could eat whatever they wanted and basically their self-esteem would still be high. They want their cake and they want to eat it too until they burst right out of their clothing. And just so that everyone knows, that overweight ex I was talking about had a roughly the same weight and body size as Trisha, except she had bigger boobs. And to be honest, I never actually had the fear that she would leave me throughout that relationship. I knew she felt bad about herself, and I didn't bother her about it. I also don't think I could ever be with an overweight woman again, because for some reason I'm just not attracted to them anymore. Perhaps subconsciously I know they're just easier to control and more faithful, because they have less options. But in the last few years, all the fat women I've met in passing have terribly inflated egos and treat men poorly just like the so-called entitled skinny chicks do. So Michael, I don't think your strategy will work out the way it might have in the past. Western women are getting bigger and bigger while they're simultaneously feminizing Western men and guys who are getting smaller and smaller and less muscular. The whole culture has gone completely insane. I think another way that our society is boosting the self-confidence of fat women is by lowering the confidence of men and creating a vacuum for women to feel good about themselves. We're elevating women and lowering men at the same time. But men with low self-confidence when they get older and are told to man up will just shrug their shoulders and go their own way or become herbivore men. If you're told as a man that you suck your whole life and you have very little self-esteem, then when a woman tells you to man up, you won't have the gumption to do what she says. Sure, you'll work hard and try your best to be a man, but you won't live up to her expectations. But you're only a shadow of a man because you've been raised by a shadow of a man who's really a single mother. The odds are pretty high that she was fat too and gave you her approval, so you'll be actually going out to seek another fat woman like your mother to give you approval as well. And the cycle just continues. The one thing that most guys marrying fat chicks will never actually think about is the medical cost, yet again. If she's costing you one to $2,000 a month in pills each and every single month because of her health ailments, then there goes your retirement, and it's going to get eaten up by both Betty Crocker and Bear just to keep her consuming chips and Dunkin' Donuts. Big agricultural companies are making a fortune off of corn-guzzling, big-cankled women wolfing down Snickers bars like it's the apocalypse, 
and they certainly see a benefit to themselves with regards to women wheeling around at Walmart and courtesy rascals. If she can't walk to the corn syrup aisle on her own, then we'll provide a motorized scooter to wheel her there so she can overdose on corn-filled goodness. And if you're stupid enough to fall for a woman like that, then wake up before it's too late. Fat women are doing whatever they can to thin shame and promote their beluga whale bellies as an alternative to healthy bodies. They look pregnant and men haven't even touched them yet. It's an immaculate conception caused by Oreo cookies, and don't be a simp standing around to watch her give birth to a tub of grease. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again for your donation, Michael, and stay away from the fat chicks because they'll probably eat you out of your breakfast. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW mystery link in the description. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the sofa-sized women away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.